Hi, my name is Conor Gerdy. I'm Senior Engineer for Active Travel with Dunleary at Down County Council. The presentation today is around the Living Streets project for Dunleary. And to talk uh, as part of the team today, we have John Montgomery from Niall Montgomery and Partners, who's going to talk about the proposal for the town centre. Rory Collins from Barry Transportation is going to talk through the traffic modelling and the project design. And just to mention that the traffic modelling exercise that's been completed in the town is, is one of the most significant pieces of work that's been done in Dunleary and that this is really being used to inform our designs and our decision making process around this project. The Living Streets Dunleary is a new project that involves sustainable mobility and public realm improvements. It aims to make our town and local streets safer and greener, communities more connected and to keep our economy vibrant. We've set ourselves a number of objectives and aims that we would like to achieve as part of this project and we can expect to see some really positive impacts to the area on foot of, of the outcome of this project. What we aim to do is to make walking, cycling and public transport more convenient, enjoyable and safer for all within the town but also into the wider residential areas. We want to improve connections between bus, rail and active travel facilities to make it easier for people to get around. We want to improve the environment by reducing traffic and related noise and air pollution and increasing planting in public spaces. We want to promote equitable options and urban design that creates a safe and welcoming experience for all members of society, regardless of age, gender, ability or income. We want to enhance the economic vibrancy of Dunleary as a mixed use town and its attractiveness as a destination by facilitating the sustainable and efficient movement of people and goods and by creating an environment that people want to linger in. We want to promote health and well-being in the community by enabling safer active travel and enhancing the public realm for outdoor play, recreation and social interaction. This project is being proposed primarily. It began as a, a, on foot of the policy that's already in place, like the County Development Plan and the Urban Planning Framework, the Climate Action Plan. And there was an opportunity through the Pathfinder project, which is a national initiative to further expand this project. But apart from the national and local policies, there is also a number of residents and community groups that are advocating for changes to the town and they want solutions to issues like congestion and safety problems. Almost 60% of the traffic traveling west through the town is through traffic, so it, it provides no benefit to the town, but it does take up a significant amount of space. Of the people traveling to the town, many of them, almost 50% of those car trips are from within one kilometer radius. And there's a number of reasons for this, but if the facilities can be provided to encourage people to change mode or to use the more sustainable modes, again, this would free up a lot of space within the town. There are gaps in the active travel network, um, particularly inland from the town and poor connectivity may be one of the leading reasons why people are driving short distances. And we're trying to close those gaps as part of this project. The Summer Streets Initiative, which was a trial pedestrianisation in 2021, demonstrated an opportunity for the town if better facilities were provided that more people are likely to come. The project began with a strong policy basis. The Summer Streets pedestrianisation in 2021 recommended that we pursue a permanent pedestrianisation scheme, but expanded out to include all of Georgia Street and then further expanded as part of the Pathfinder project. Towards the end of 2022 and 2023, we've carried out a number of pre-designed public engagements. As I mentioned, we've carried out a significant traffic modelling exercise and we're discussing bus routing options with the NTA. We're currently at this stage where we're preparing designs for planning and public engagement with a view to creating a planning application in spring 2023. Assuming a positive outcome at planning, we'd look to commence construction in 2024 and be completed by 2025. The main features of the Living Streets project, the Georgia Street pedestrianisation between Patrick Street and Myrtle Square, and then the town centre and streetscape improvements all along Georgia Street from the People's Park to York Road. The Living Streets neighbourhood seeks to connect Georgia Street to the hinterlands of Dunleary Town and up as far as Tivoli Road and Coolinore. It also looks to connect to the coastal mobility route, the metals and the Dunleary Central project that recently achieved Part 8 planning approval. The purpose of these schemes is to tie the town to give, together to give mobility options to anybody in whichever mode they choose to travel to the town. In terms of work completed today, we've reviewed all of the existing research and information provided uh, both locally and nationally. We've carried out topographical surveys where, which, where we've mapped all of the street furniture and facilities so we can create designs. We've carried out tree surveys and ground penetrating radar surveys to map underground utilities so we can better understand where we can plant new trees. We've developed some initial engineering and architectural layouts and considering the key issues that have come forward through the pre-designed public engagement and also the previous studies that were done. 
The traffic modelling exercise is the largest that has ever been undertaken in Dunleary Town, and that's to, to make sure that any proposed changes can will not result in any great traffic issues in the town and, in fact, improve them. We have to look at the bus routing options. With a proposed pedestrianisation, this will have an impact on bus routing, and we are in discussions with the National Transport Authority. We've carried out a series of pre-designed public engagement activities to try and gather feedback and, and capture a snapshot of that feedback from the pre-designed engagement uh, that will be talked about later in the slides. I'm going to hand you over now to John Montgomery of Niall Montgomery & Partners, who is going to go through what the proposals are for the town centre. Hi there, my name is John Montgomery from Neil Montgomery & Partners, Landscape Architects and Architects. Um, me and my team are looking after the uh, street improvements for the entire length of uh, Georgia Street and some of those interfacing streets also. And whilst the project is about creating those improvements and bringing life to uh, of what is already a vibrant street, there are some particular nodes which we'll be looking at to help curate a journey along uh, the street itself. And they're all kind of influenced by the rich kind of cultural history uh, and context of Dunleary and how we can tap into that uh, identity and character. The extent of the pedestrianised area, which is kind of at the heart of the, the project, for us at least, um, is defined uh, by Myrtle Square at one end and by Marine Road Junction at the other end. And within that, then, we have a number of key nodes and spaces for people to be able to stop, rest uh, and create those uh, moments for activity. Also tying into that is uh, Sussex Street and Convent Road, which in themselves kind of bleed into the wider context of uh, Dunleary and act as gateways. One of the key drivers around the pedestrianisation of the street is to help create spaces where people can stop, feel safe, where we can reduce that noise um, around people, to provide areas where we can have those uh, rest stops for people and create little kind of small gathering points, create a greater sense of community for the community that's there already and for the community that's coming into the, the town centre itself as well. Within that, we're looking at kind of creating a, a more coherent streetscape. And that's something that's been well established from the metals and from the greater uh, Dun area area, areas that have already been improved and very, very successful. On the street itself, typically, this will be pedestrianised, but there will be access provided for uh, vehicles for loading at particular times of the day. The streets very much and the design principles are very much um, looking to ensure that we meet building regulations, providing safe surfaces for all users and those for with mobility and other impairments to ensure that those surfaces are, are provided for to have tapping lines, uh, reduce clutter um, and move things generally out of the way and make them much more kind of uh, livable and friendly. Um, a key driver as well, which is very a hot topic for us right now, is about the biodiversity and those credentials of the street, how we can create more opportunities for planting, more opportunities for our suds and sustainable drainage systems as well, and tie these elements into the street, really following world-class principles that have been set in other countries uh, to help drive the project and give uh, uh, Dunleary that added kind of character that we are looking for. Uh, space for sitting and dining outdoors has been provided for and acknowledged, so retailers, coffee shop owners, all of those elements are still uh, very much a part of the street itself and very successful in what the street is right now in creating that vibrance. Um, whilst we're still quite high level in our designs, we have begun to think about some of those surface finishes and they'll very much tie into what's been successful, as I said earlier, within the metals and tie into the overall character of Dunleary, not to compete with the beautiful architecture which is already in place, but to really complement that as well. Key aspects of the design will be the guide strips for um, tapping lines for uh, visually impaired. It will be reducing clutter in areas and kind of centralizing that in specific zones and um, using warmer materials in the actual landscape as well. So we can move away from the grayness that we get typically on an Irish uh, day, and bring in a bit of warmth that works quite nicely with some of the red brick uh, buildings. Uh, the opportunities for planting, which are kind of clustered, and with them we have the seating as well. So again, making those safe, well-surveilled spaces for people to enjoy. Marine Road is one uh, node uh, that we're looking at, and already it's a very successful place for people to meet and a kind of a landmark in its own right in its positioning and how people will use that space we don't want to 
change it as such, but we want to utilize it in a greater way. So providing seating, which is gonna be in well-orientated spaces with sunlight, um, and again, very safe as well for people to be able to sit, meet, and really kind of help to create that identity for what we're doing uh, within Dunleary itself. Typical views of that will demonstrate just early ideas and very kind of broad thinking of integrating uh, seating with the planting, the material types, tactile paving and how that's been integrated in there also, the visual contrast in those elements and tree planting as well. So really trying to get more opportunities for planting um, of native uh, species, um, both in terms of shrub planting, but also in tree planting as well. The integration of Convent Road and Sussex Street, so the junction where um, they both meet George's Street, is a, very, is a great opportunity and a very important one as well. So there's a great opportunity for spill out from cafes in, in this area particularly, but also having little pocket parks and pocket spaces within that which are well planted uh, and complement the areas uh, where you might sit and pay and give you another opportunity to sit and meet and just take a moment to reflect on what's going on around. And we intend to look at opportunities for uh, children's play within them also. Um, close to the end of the pedestrianised area, we do have to consider access into the hospital. And at this point, that is being considered. The actual design for it is still uh, in, under discussion, but the idea is to ensure that that access remains and integrates itself with the proposals for Myrtle Square. And then outside uh, the Carnegie Library, just as another example of how we're approaching the design, very much using the same sort of materials so we have that cohesive feel throughout the space. But I think in opportunities in zones like this, we need to be thinking about how we're reflecting that building use and that very kind of influential element that Carnegie gave uh, to Dunleary. It being a library, we were thinking about that movement, you know, the books, the textual feel and those ideas and how that can be very specific to this one particular area and create that uh, character and identity almost as a bookmark to the end of the uh, design. That brings me to the end of my section. I'd like to hand over to Rory Collins. Thank you. Thanks, John. My name is Rory Collins. I'm an associate with Barry Transportation and a consulting engineer on this project. I'm just going to talk a bit how traffic modelling has informed the project design and what the emerging preferred traffic layout is for the Deliri area. So firstly, what is traffic modelling? It's a, it's a quantitative tool that can assess a variety of design options to see how they compare to each other. The computer model can predict what routes traffic would take and the levels of delays expected. For this assessment, the Living Streets neighbourhood, a local area model of Dunleary was built using data from the National Transport Authority's Eastern Regional Model. The streets in the orange colour on this map were already contained within the bigger regional model. Uh, this model is a powerful computer model that can predict traffic movement movements within the entire Greater Dublin area. However, it was decided for this project that this model did not contain sufficient detail at a local level to accurately model all behaviour in the Dunleary area. To address this, the team added all the additional streets shown in blue. These were manually coded into the model to make sure it captured all routes available to traffic. In this way, we could get as accurate a picture as possible as to what would happen to traffic movements in the town. We began by assessing the current situation. Traffic counts were done in 33 locations around the study area, as shown in the figure on the left. The output of this was detailed data on the traffic movements and the queuing that is currently experienced. And these traffic counts were done in September 2022 and so represent post-COVID traffic patterns. This gathered data was then used to calibrate the model to make sure that it correctly predicted what was happening on the ground. So what options did we test with this? The first was the uh, pedestrianisation of Georgia Street Lower, uh, as has been discussed before. The second was placing modal filters in different locations. A modal filter is a piece of road infrastructure that can prevent the passage of certain types of traffic. In this case, it's bollards or planters in the middle of the road that would prevent cars from passing a certain point but pedestrians and cyclists could still pass through. So many different locations for where these could go were tested. The third thing was changes in direction of traffic along the coast road. The, this table summarizes all the options that were tested. Along the top, you can see all the various interventions, such as a modal filter in a certain location or a change in direction of traffic on a certain road. These interventions were combined together into what were called scenarios and over 15 scenarios were tested to come up with the preferred arrangement. 
So for example, scenario two was pedestrianization of Georgia Street plus one modal filter on Tivoli Road. We would have plugged that into the model to see what the traffic impacts were. And you can see we layered different combinations of interventions and tested each combination of them. So what was the preferred option? The preferred option involved pedestrianizing Georgia Street Lower to the same extent as was done previously on a trial basis as part of the Summer Streets project. This is from the entrance to St. Michael's Hospital to the junction with Patrick Street. Sections of Sussex Street and Convent Road are also included in the pedestrianization. Preferred option was chosen so that it removed as much through traffic as possible from the Living Streets neighborhood, making the area more suitable for walking and cycling and making it healthier by removing traffic noise and emissions. The option that achieved this involved the introduction of two modal filters, one on Tivoli Road and one on Cross Avenue. These two modal filters combine to prevent the use of the area as a through route. I mean the only traffic access in the area would be destination traffic. A modal filter is also proposed on Clorinda Park West. This prevents the use of the road as a rat run and again means this road would be used by local traffic only. The preferred scenario also involves reversing the direction of traffic on the coast road at Windsor Terrace, making it northbound. This would allow traffic to use the coast as a through route and to bypass the busy junction near the entrance to the People's Park. This would take pressure off this junction and reduce delays for cars and bus passengers here. Some summary graphs showing the volumes of traffic that the model predicted for the preferred option are shown here and on the following slides. A comprehensive modeling report will be prepared as part of the part application with full details on this. As mentioned, the preferred option removes all through trips from the Living Streets neighborhood by closing off potential routes for through traffic. As a result of this, there is a significant drop in traffic predicted for all streets within the block. Traffic on Tivoli Road is reduced from 10,000 vehicles per day to around 5,000, and the traffic on Patrick Street and Mulgrave Street is also significantly reduced. Different options for the modal filter on Tivoli Road were tested, including one option which had the modal filter immediately to the east of Patrick Street. So if you came to the top of Patrick Street, you would still be allowed to turn right. This option found that a through route would remain through the block and some traffic coming from the glass tool direction would be able to use that route to get through. This option saw the level of traffic significantly increasing on Patrick Street and as a result was not preferred. The preferred option has the modal filter immediately to the west of Patrick Street so that if you come to the top of the street you would be required to turn left. No through routes would remain open under this layout and the traffic on all roads in the block, including on Patrick Street, is predicted to fall by approximately 50%. Another important consideration in this modeling exercise was accounting for modal shift. Modal shift is a modeling term that refers to people choosing to change the mode of transportation they use. In the case of this project, it is people choosing to change from driving to walking, cycling, or taking public transport. One of the main objectives of this scheme is to create safer spaces for people to walk, wheel, and cycle. Significant reduction in traffic within the Living Streets neighbourhood, along with other proposed mobility and urban realm improvements proposed by this project, will encourage some people to take fewer trips by car. The local area model that was used is a static demand model, meaning that it cannot predict a change in how people choose to travel beyond them taking a different route to drive. So the model needs to be told what assumptions to make in order to assess these kind of impacts. So two modal shift scenarios were developed from observed data from previous schemes of a similar nature. These were named low and high, and each involved a certain percentage of drivers on shorter journeys choosing sustainable modes rather than driving. This was backed up by data from recent studies of London's low traffic networks. These studies showed that traffic within the blocks of 46 different blocks that were studied, 37% drop in traffic within the block with an increase of only 1.3% on the roads around the edges. These studies were based on real life traffic counts taken before and after installation. To remain conservative in our, conservative in our approach, even the high mode shift scenario assumes a lower shift than was actually observed in the London studies. And for some context, the Climate Action Plan 2023 has set a target of a 25% reduction in total car journeys in Ireland by 2030. This slide shows the predicted levels of traffic on the roads that are around the edges of the Living Streets neighbourhood, namely Georgia Street Upper, York Road and Glenageary Road Lower and Upper. Traffic on Georgia Street Upper and Glenageary Road Lower was initially predicted to rise but when the effects of the modal shift were modelled, the total levels were found to actually fall compared to the do-nothing scenario. The model does, however, predict some increase in traffic on Glenageary Road Upper and on York Road. 
This slide shows the levels of traffic expected on the coast road near the Dunleary Baths. As this section of the coast can now be used as a through route for traffic, the traffic levels are predicted to rise here. Pedestrianising Georgia Street lower would have a big impact on the routing of buses as they could no longer travel down the street. The design team is currently looking at this issue and evaluating the various options that are available. The preferred option will need to be agreed with the NTA who are responsible for operating the buses. This figure shows two potential options for the routing of the 46A. One via York Road and Crofton Road that's shown in red and one via Glengarry Road's upper, lower, Georgia Street upper and Marine Road that's shown in blue. The second road in blue appears to have some benefits as it would serve a larger catchment and would drop and collect passengers directly from the town centre. However, further studies are needed to assess the impact of this. This slide shows the predicted impacts on nitrous oxide emissions extracted from the traffic model. The preferred option shows significant increases in air quality when compared to the do-nothing, particularly on, on Georgia Street Lower and on Tivoli Road. These can be seen moving from the red to the green colour in these images. So some key findings from the traffic modelling. Introducing modal gates would significantly reduce traffic within the Living Streets neighbourhood, providing a healthier, safer and more attractive environment to walk and cycle in. A slight increase in traffic is predicted on York Road, Glenagiri Road Upper and on a section of the Coast Road. All roads can continue to handle all destination traffic to Dunleary with only minor increases in journey times in some places at peak times. Access to all properties by car can be maintained at all times, with the exception of the pedestrianised section of Georgia Street Lower. This solution appears to be workable, even before considering the significant positive impact that a likely mode shift from cars to walking and cycling would bring. Changing the direction of traffic on the coast road would alleviate pressure at the People's Park Junction, reducing delays for traffic and bus passengers at peak times. The model found that traffic signal timings are not currently optimised at many junctions in the area, and that doing this would allow for a better flow of traffic. Finally, bus routes would need to change if Georgia Street Lower is pedestrianised. Consultation with the National Transport Authority is taking place to determine the best bus routing options and to assess this impact. I'll now pass you on to my colleagues from MCO to discuss the public engagement elements of this project. Thank you. Thanks very much, Rory. My name is Ruth Doyle and I work at a consultancy called MCO and we're working with Barry Transportation and the wider team managing the public engagement for this project. So now I'm going to give a quick overview of the engagement activities that have taken so far during the pre-design phase and some of the kinds of feedback that has been coming through. This will just be a snapshot of the activity as we're creating a more detailed report evaluating the feedback and we'll be releasing that in the coming weeks. So I'll give you a quick flavour of what's come through so far. So the purpose of the pre-design engagement was to raise awareness and to inform people on the project. We wanted to make sure as many people as possible were aware of this project and how they can get involved. And we really wanted to hear their perspectives on the project, what they hoped it might achieve and if they had any concerns or specific ideas that they wanted to see reflected in the project design. So we wanted to know particularly feedback relating to three key elements of the project, which were the public realm, so what, we, what they would like to see within the public realm design, what their hopes and concerns were for the Living Streets neighbourhood area, and what changes they'd like to see prioritised to make it easier to walk, cycle and use public transport in the town. So what options did we have available for people to engage in the pre-design phase? We had a variety of different ways that people could take part. We had a drop-in information session in the Dominican Primary School and this was for people and local residents or anyone who wanted to call in over the course of an afternoon, speak to the project team and voice some of their feedback. We also held a pop-up in the Lexicon Library on the 9th of February. We had a webinar uh, which was providing information on the project and we also had an online survey which was open from the 21st of December till the start of February. So, and, and this was really just to reflect the fact that so many people have different ways they like to engage and some people prefer to meet online, uh, some people prefer to meet in person, not everyone can take part in a digital survey so we wanted to make sure that we were being as inclusive as possible and we'll apply similar techniques when it comes to the statutory consultation phase as well. So how was awareness built for this, these engagement activities? We dropped 1,800 leaflets into the Living Streets neighbourhood, which was mostly residential addresses. We had 300 leaflets hand delivered to businesses throughout the main street. We emailed almost 200 local representative community groups. 
um, and also had a suite of digital media messages and posts that went out through Dunner and Ratdown County Council social media channels. In addition to this, we had face-to-face -face individual meetings with some key groups who had reached out to us, so that included some of the ones on the screen there, and we will continue to engage with them over the coming months and through the statutory engagement period. So how many people took part? Through all these different activities, we had 575 people participate in this pre-design engagement, and you can see the different numbers there per activity. With respect to our online survey, where we had 350 responses. We had a very good spread across demographics, including age, gender, and 60% of the respondents were from Dunleary Town itself, with 89% being from local residents. So now I want to give a snapshot of some of the feedback that we had come through. And overall, we had high levels of support and interest in the project, and most people were conceiving Living Streets as a positive development for Dunleary, and felt that it would make it a more attractive place to live and work and address issues they had around safety, for, particularly for walking and cycling. We did a sentiment analysis of the responses, and that was basically evaluating whether or not people seemed positively disposed to the project or whether or not they were hesitant. And we found that 60% were supportive, 29% appeared to be neutral, and 11% were more negative towards the project. In terms of what people cared about most, over half of responses were on the need for safe, sustainable mobility. So that was talking about cycling, walking and public transport. 18% of comments were on traffic congestion and related safety issues. And there was widespread agreement that action is needed to tackle some of the traffic issues within the area. And connected to this, safety really is the big issue for pedestrians, cyclists and schools. And a lot of people were mentioning that this is a key deterrent to them choosing more active mobility modes. 14% of responses were on the need for more planting and, and in support of the environmental benefits that the project would bring through greener spaces and cleaner air, for example. Some of the key concerns that we see coming through were particularly linked to the potential increase in congestion as a result of the scheme. So about 8% of responses were querying what would happen to traffic if, if particular roads were closed and were concerned around those impacts. A lot of concern um, and a lot of emphasis on the need for accessibility and inclusivity in design and to ensure that spaces are friendly for all people, no matter what their ability. Access to the hospital was considered a key concern and requests that that be factored into the design and con connected to this was the issue of bus routes changing with the pedestrianisation, where are the bus stops going to go and, and can people still get to the town by bus? So those were some of the queries that people were voicing through the engagement. Going back to some of the project objectives that Connor would have mentioned earlier on in the presentation, what prompted most discussion and debate was safe, sustainable mobility. So that particular project objective people wanted to see elevated through the project. They also really cared about community well-being and improving spaces for inhabitants, for visitors, for residents, for businesses alike, and saw that there could be a really positive impact on community well-being through the project. And then thirdly, greener places. People really emphasised the, the benefit that that would bring for them and for, for the area. I've just broken up the responses into two key themes now, one being mobility and the next being landscape design. And I want to talk about what did people care with, about with respect to mobility. So here we have a breakdown of all the things that people spoke about with respect to mobility. And you can see the main areas of discussion were on cycling, the orange segment of the pie, traffic in blue and walking in red. So for cycling, most comments were on the need for safer, more connected bike infrastructure, better bike facilities and parking, and for it to be safer for all ages and abilities to cycle to and from the area. Talk about traffic problems was another key issue. 10% of comments specifically called for interventions to reduce traffic speed and traffic calming and volume of traffic going through the area and to improve safety through doing so. 8% of comments were on the need for a safer walking environment with wider footpaths, removal of street clutter, safer crossings, removal of cobblestones and better traffic light sequencing. And people felt that action in this area would also serve to make the streets more accessible for wheelchairs and people with disabilities. So this pie chart now shows a breakdown of themes that came through around the landscape upgrades that would happen as part of Living Streets. So you can see that 14% of all comments were requests for action to create a greener environment with more planting and the creation of cleaner air. Much of the feedback that people provided was on pedestrianisation and a sentiment analysis showed a majority of comments appeared to be in favour of this part of the project 
and all the potential positives it would bring for community and for business. With respect to other public realm suggestions, 8% were on the need for more seating, play and recreational opportunities within the public space and enlivening that space as a, as a place that people want to linger in and spend time in. The need for inclusive design came through as a strong theme. Around 8% of all comments were on this and people really emphasise that we need to apply best practice in universal design and have adequate provision of disabled parking and access for those to the town who still need to drive and that's something that needs to be maintained. So with regards to next steps for the Living Streets Dunleary project, we need to agree the revised bus network with the NTA. For the hospital, we will be developing the landscaping design at the front of the hospital, reviewing the ways cur people currently travel there and considering what options can be incorporated into the design to allow patients and visitors who would previously have gone to the bus stop directly outside the hospital to continue to access it safely and conveniently. Cost estimates will be done for the construction of the project and environmental studies will be done to capture all potential impacts of the project. We'll be working up the visualisations and design for public display as part of the Part 8 planning application, which we hope to submit towards the end of spring, start of summer 2023. And at that point, there will be further statutory consultation period on the project. And we look forward to engaging with people again at that particular phase. So thank you all so much for listening to the presentation and we look forward to engaging with you in the coming months.